let's go through a little resource that I just made. Um, I call it the Stoic Habit Flow Chart. And you, as you may know, um, Stoicism is one of these, you know, Greek uh, philosophies. Marcus Aurelius, I believe, was a Stoic. And the takeaway I have about Stoicism, which I used to repeat uh, research kind of frequently and have slipped away from it, it's not really top of mind or fresh, is that um, your habits should be useful, honorable, beneficial, and beautiful. So uh, one of these ways of approaching life is by checking out what you do on a regular basis and like seeing if it meets all of those criteria. Um, and you can use this exercise for a habit that you already have or for considering kind of auditioning a habit that you would like to have in the future or are considering getting started like today. So uh, I was thinking about uh, my habits right now and how, like what I might want to introduce. And what I came up was this, it's like, um, when I go to bed in the evening, I turn right off from full intensity, like working or socializing or, or playing a game, whatever I've been doing, I just switch off, go to the bathroom and climb into bed. And aside from saying good night to my loved ones, I, I don't really have any wind down time. I go like 100% until I am done and then I am asleep. And I appreciate my ability to fall asleep right away. That is a real gift. And also I think something that I'm missing from my life is this cozy moment or series of moments before bed when you know that the day is coming to a close and you soften and you relax and you start to slip into sleepy time mode and it's a, a cozy, gentle, pleasant winding down of the day before your head hits the pillow. And I'd like to incorporate a little something like that. So what I, w I was just quickly brainstorming before I hit record for this pod podcast episode and I was thinking, well, what if I wanted to introduce a new habit before I go to bed, and that is drinking a cup of tea before I fall asleep? So let's run it through the flowchart and see what happens. It says, uh, step one, is it useful? Uh, well, uh, perhaps it would be soothing and perhaps it would help keep me hydrated and introduce a little bit more water into my body. Um, soothing, hydrating, yeah, I'll, I'll call that, I'll call that useful. So uh, if the answer to that is yes, repeat it with honorable. Is drinking a cup of tea before bed honorable? <laughs> well, um, perhaps I could consider it honorable because I am intentionally taking care of myself. Um, and I would say that being attentive to your well-being so that you can in turn be of service to others is honorable. Yeah, that that actually rings kind of true. I've never connected tea with honor before, but yeah, there you go. Okay, so is it honorable? Yes, if so, repeat with beneficial. How is, in this case, beneficial different from useful? Well, excuse me. 
Let's see. Uh, <laughs> I suppose it's beneficial because the herbs and other ingredients and in tisanes and teas might be healthy for my system and perhaps soothing myself and hydrating myself might not only help me wind down and feel cozy and calm before bed, but also improve my quality of sleep. Okay, so I think it, it passes the beneficial uh, criterion. So the last thing to run this through is beautiful is drinking a cup of tea beautiful? Uh, well, I think often a cup of tea is beautiful because you can choose an appealing cup with like sensory elements like uh, ridges or rough spots in the clay or the curves of the ceramic or or the warmth of the mug heating your hands. Um, and often, you know, the smell is very pleasant um, if smells can be beautiful, but you can also present tea, like with a, a saucer and a spoon and, you know, a, a teapot, uh, and that can be gorgeous. And if you get one of these, like, tea blooms like where they come in this dried up little bundle and then you put it in the glass teapot and then you pour the water over it and it blooms into this tea flower that is certainly beautiful it's kind of like aquarium tea although the idea of mixing fish and tea is a uh, that doesn't seem very appealing to me but you know the, the sort of ceremony around tea. Of course, there's um, the tea houses and from both Western and Eastern traditions, and they're very centered around beauty. So, yes, uh, as long as I were to appreciate the beauty of the steam and the way the liquid changes color as the tea steeps, and to appreciate the beauty of the dishware that I use and perhaps slow down and be mindful of the sensory experiences, uh, it could be quite beautiful as long as my head's uh, aware of the beauty and not just on autopilot. So apparently taking a cup of tea before bed passes this stoic habit flow chart test without any deviations into the the no part um so that's cool let me see if i can figure out uh a habit that might get into some no's so we can see what <laughs> uh what that might look like okay so let's say that as part of my waking up routine I were to make a big vat of, of spaghetti with a hearty red sauce and eat like, like as much as I wanted before I take my son to school. Let's run that through the flowchart. Um, and I'm hoping I'll come up with some no's, but I, I really don't know. Is it useful? Okay, well, you know, spaghetti with a hearty red sauce would nourish me. It would be warm. Um, it might give me some protein or some, some vegetables. Um, actually, although spaghetti is sort of counter to traditional Western breakfast 
uh, taste profiles, it would probably be delicious um, as long as I could separate that from wanting like toast and coffee and fruit. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd have to figure out how to do it quickly so it doesn't cut into my time in the morning, which is pretty precious. But I'll say tentatively, yes, it is useful. And now, so the next thing to look at is, is it honorable? So is eating a bowl of spaghetti in the morning honorable? Uh, well, well, we, well, we did this thing already with tea. We're taking care of your nourishment and practicing self-care is honorable because if you're doing well yourself, you can take care of others and that is honorable. So, okay, eating a bowl of spaghetti is useful and honorable in the morning. Um, is it beneficial? Oh, hell, I think this is going to meet all of the criteria because it's beneficial because it would likely help me sustain myself until lunch and to feel well fed and nourished and supply me with nutrition and I could share it with other people if they wanted spaghetti for breakfast so and then I might have leftovers and I could eat them um, for lunch or dinner, so <laughs> it's beneficial. Okay, is it beautiful? Well, yeah, it's beautiful because there's nothing as tantalizing to me as a bowl full of spaghetti. And if you wanted to plate it nice nicely with shreds of Parmesan or basil or or whatnot, and and put it like in a in a white bowl and wipe the rim clean and you know a silver spoon oh yeah now I want spaghetti uh, maybe I should choose something that's not not food related because apparently food is just good for reading stoicism standards so let's get silly uh what if I wanted to okay let, let's just go what if I wanted to call up a friend and gossip so is calling up a friend to gossip useful uh, okay so it might be useful because through gossiping we're able to connect and have a rapport and to feel good about having someone we can call and vent to or be scandalized with or just feel like we can relax and not be so perfect and polite. Um, and it might be useful because according to Jonathan Haidt, who wrote The Happiness Hypothesis, gossiping about people and giving them little reputations for behaving incorrectly is one way in which we shape our societal standards and deter others from doing uh, socially unacceptable things so they don't get a bad reputation. But in my view, so there very well may be useful reasons to gossip. However, in my life, I have not found it useful. In fact, I found it to be the opposite because it turns people against each other and it is hurtful to be gossiped about. And it just doesn't have any loving or compassionate or accepting qualities to it as, as far as I can see. and. You know, after a while, there's only so much gossip that is fresh and new. Like, the things we tend to gossip about, I think we get oversaturated. It. Like, who's sleeping with who? And who's doing this? And, oh my gosh, did you know that this is happening? It's like, scandal gets uninteresting after a while. And I think it's more useful to talk about 
our creative ideas or what's going on that is interesting out in the world in terms of developments and politics and and green innovations and art and culture and history and beauty in math and the subtlety of poetry so yeah I would say that that uh, making a habit of calling a friend to gossip is not useful. Okay, so once you kind of fail that and you say no, it says go back and brainstorm 10 more useful habits. So I could call up a friend and try to deceive her so I can get out of something. Or I could make a habit of calling up a friend and begging for work. Or I could make a habit of calling up a friend and trying to advertise my business to her. Or I could call up a friend and invite her to come over and garden with me. Or I could make up a habit of calling up a friend and asking if she'd like to go for a walk or go to coffee or uh, have our kids get together for a play date or get together to talk about what's going on in our lives and to seek support and for someone to listen to us. Or I could call up a friend and see if she could use any help today uh, because I have time and I am a little bit lonely. Or, yeah, so I think there are plenty more useful habits I could develop. So let's see, uh, let's consider this idea of inviting a friend over to come and garden with me. And let's say that by that I mean one new friend every day, so I'm not calling up the same person to invite them to come garden with me. Okay, have I come up with a more useful habit? Yes. Is it honorable? Um, yeah. I would say inviting a series of friends over to garden is honorable because by doing that, they might get a little fresh air, a little bit of green space, a chance to interact with the beneficial microbes in the soil. Uh, perhaps they'd go home with an armful of rosemary or whatever fruit or vegetable is in season. They'd get to poke around and see the beauty of the flowers and whatever else is looking gorgeous in the garden. Uh, so yeah, it's honorable. Um, is it beautiful? Oh, hell yes. Um, connecting with a friend is beautiful, and being in a garden is beautiful, and being outside with the sky and the sun and the wind and the clouds and the birds and the friends passing by, that is certainly beautiful. Um, and I skipped beneficial. Is it beneficial? Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm not alone. Uh, when I don't want to be, and I have a chance to listen to a friend and hear what's going on in their life and be together in a slow-paced, unstressed, intimate environment that's very casual and unpretentious. And uh, we might maintain the garden a little bit by trimming back the paths or um, doing a little bit of uh, pruning or adding a little compost or mulch so the garden would be getting served so it can serve us, so we can serve it, so it can serve us in this kind of symbiotic relationship. And we'd get a little bit of vitamin D from the sun exposure. So yeah, that is a, a useful, honorable, beneficial and beautiful habit to have. So if I wanted to build in this habit of inviting a friend over every day to putter in the garden, that would sync up with all of the, the stoic habit criteria. Okay.
That was a little fun. Um, thank you for listening. You can always go to reflectivejournaling.net. It's got links to our Facebook group, and it's got links to how you can pay me if you find what I offer valuable. And there are free printables so you can try collaborative coaching and other little things and lists of our events. Um, so go find out a little bit more and join us because there's like this cool little seed of a community forming and we would love for you to be a part of it. Okay, I'm done now. I'll see you in the next episode.